Hey, y'all, welcome back to the Late Night Vision Show. This is episode number 118. My name is Jason, owner of Outdoor Legacy, and I've got my partner in crime, Hans, from the Hans East Texas YouTube channel with me. As always, what's going on, Mr. Hans? Hey, how are you doing, Jason? Hey, I want to let everybody know that um, I have loaded onto YouTube, I put a, a new video, the Pulsar Thermion XQ38 official review. So I would love everybody to go check it out. Uh, it's uh, probably not as much detail as our podcast that we did review only because that's 40, 40 minutes versus 14 <laughs> or 15 minutes. And you and I talk a lot, but right. uh, there is some thermal video on there. So a lot of people talk about wanting to see what it looks like through the scope. And I've got several clips up uh, some, <laughs> you'll be proud of me. I took uh, the XQ38 out and my goal was just to get great video. If I shot something that was, you know, shot a hog or something or coyote, that that's perfect. That's icing on the cake. But I really needed to get good video. I stalked up uh, to a group of hogs about 50 yards away, set up the tripod and uh, the the rifle and the scope, and sat there and videoed for about five minutes. Went through a lot of the menu, went through all the color palettes, went through everything. And about the time that I was going to go click the safety off and start shooting, they ran off. <laughs> so... <laughs> I got five minutes of great video, uh, but I did not get to shoot a hog, but I still went home and uh, knew that the night was a success. Because, you know, with what Jason and I do, uh, shooting hogs, shooting cows is just a part of it. And really, it's a small part of it. Uh, The main thing is to bring good content, good quality content, good video uh, for, for all of you out there to be able to see what these optics look like at different ranges and the functionality and, and how well they do in different conditions. So it was a success. So I would really appreciate it if y'all go and uh, give that video a view. Again, it's the Pulsar Thermion XQ38 review. Give it a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, so we're, we're busy. We got a lot of things going on. Yeah. I was just going to say Hans is right. That's one thing that uh, I know there's other guys out there putting out great YouTube content and they're going to know exactly what we're talking about, but going out and getting on these hogs, it, you know what? This is really no different than producing a, I say no different, <laughs> it is different, but it's the same concept is producing like a, a, a great uh, hunting show, like a deer hunting show on TV where it's all about the video. Yeah. And if, if you've seen some of those shows, you know, the, the hunter, he's there, he's got his cameraman behind him, he's on the buck, maybe he's bow hunting, and he's on it, he's drawn back, and the cameraman's like, I can't see him, can't see him, don't have a good shot. So he doesn't take yeah. the shot, because yeah. they're making a hunting show, he's yeah. not just hunting. Oh, yeah. And so I know uh, a couple nights ago, uh, I was out um, trying to get some video out of a scope that I'm testing right now, and I, I saw some hogs down there in my place, I took off down there and got ridiculously close and i'm just going to say this some people say it's a lie hans knows exactly where i was at i was 20 yards or less from these hogs Mm -hmm. and uh crazy close they never knew i was there and they were behind my barbed wire fence so they had they had gone through my fence you know out of my pasture just behind the fence well Mm -hmm. uh i was getting video granted i wish they weren't behind the fence And I also, I could shot them, but it wasn't going to be that great video uh, shooting them because they're behind the fence. So I let them go. And it's one of those things where uh, they'll come back tomorrow and I'm going to have a better video then. So I know what Hans is talking about. It's all about the video. And and, and I know this, you you made a comment of this the other night. It was the same thing with me videoing these hogs to get good steady, not shaking, you know, video, mm-hmm. uh, even if you're on a tripod, whatever it is, it, to, to get a minute of good video, you may have to record for five or 10 minutes to get those clips that are really yeah. good video that you're trying to, to, to show. And, and so anyway, it's, it's a lot yeah, of work re- uh, and it's not always just shooting. No, it's not. So yeah, I recorded for that clip was, uh, almost five minutes and it turned out to be 45 seconds of usable video out of the five minutes uh, of total video. But yeah, you see these hunting shows and it's 30 minutes and you know, the shot comes at the very end of the show where they shoot the deer and it's a 10 second clip. Well, you need 
15 <laughs> minutes of usable video, which probably means you have to shoot have an hour oh, or two yeah. in a can, you know, so it is exactly. tough, but, uh, was out really appreciate y'all go checking that out. The Pulsar Thermion XQ 38 formal review, but what we're here to talk about today, uh, this is, uh, and we're going to do, this is the official review, the formal review of the AGM ASP TM 35 dash three, uh, six forty. There's lots of numbers and letters in there. There AG- is a lot of numbers. AGM ASP TM 35 640. So this is a 640 thermal monocular. We're going to be doing the full review of it right now. Uh, I know on my YouTube channel, I'll be doing the full review of this as well and showing some thermal video. Uh, but we're going to get right on into the specs right now, as usual, with Mr. Uh, Jason. Go on with it. All right. So as usual, um, Hans gives me this list to read off because it's boring. Yeah, and it's boring. the people who aren't into it hate it, and their eyes are glazed over. And then Hans well, comes back and rescues everybody with the interesting talk. You know, so. I, I think it really turns out because I usually have the optic by the time we do the reviews. and Because right. you've already had your turn with it. I have it. So I show it while you go over the specs. So. That's that's what we'll tell everybody. It, yeah, that but that's I think what your that reasons sounds right good. Too. But basically, <laughs> I'm like the uh, the flight attendant telling you about the safety stuff that nobody listens to because you've been on a plane before. So <laughs> anyway, I'm going to go over all the specs. So here it is. It is the AGM ASP TM 35 640. So it's a 35 millimeter objective. That's what this is. Let's go over the, what their little code means. Anytime you see this in the AGM units, it is handy because it tells you something. TM stands for thermal monocular. TS stands for thermal scope. That's logical enough. 35 is going to be the objective lens size, so it's 35 millimeters. The next number is the resolution. So this unit is a 35 millimeter 640 by 512 unit. And that is something I should mention. It is 640 by 512, where most all of the other 640s, I'd say every 640 we've ever reviewed on this show are 640 by 480. But this is a, uh, it's got a different thermal core, so a little higher resolution. So that's always a good thing. Jumping in here, first thing, the one thing that I always forget is the price. Uh, and we're going to be talking about that. Didn't matter if I forgot it here. This is going to be brought up again. Uh, 3245 US dollars. Uh, that is a great price, and we will harp on that in a little bit. So it is a 1.4 power base magnification. It does have a digital zoom that will take it all the way up to a 5.6 power. So 1.4 base mag, 5.6 on the high end of the digital zoom. It is uh, a 50 hertz refresh rate, a 17 micron uh, thermal core. It's uh, 35 millikelvins. Uh, It's something that we really have never talked about until this year. That's kind of come up with uh, AGM and some of the other brands. People started talking about millikelvins. Basically, the lower the number, the better. means the better detail uh, that you get in the image. It's a little more sensitive uh, to uh, the heat. So it's a good thing. 35 is as low as any thermal that we've ever reviewed. Again, as I mentioned, 35 millimeter objective lens. It is a focusable objective lens. So that means you can focus it in for the best image quality. It has four color palettes, uh, black hot, white hot, and then, excuse me, two more uh, of different color palettes. It's got an OLED display with a high resolution of 1024 by 768 on the display screen. It has internal video recording, no audio, It does not require an SD card or anything like that. It records internally. You can hook it up to a computer via USB cable and pull that right off. It does have a smartphone app. It also has uh, a IPS 6.7 rating. That means it's fully waterproof, submersible to three foot for 30 minutes. So nothing worried about there if you get in the rain with it. Uh, It's rated down to negative 22 degrees Fahrenheit. And... It has a three-year warranty, and that warranty, as we learned on another uh, podcast, 
is a transferable warranty. So if you sell this unit to somebody else, uh, that unit uh, will carry that warranty for the full three years from the original time it was purchased or shipped to the dealer. Uh, also, it has an internal non-removable rechargeable battery. Uh, it's got about a five hour battery life on the bench. So in normal, you know, 70, 75 degree conditions, just turning the unit on, no video recording, not zooming, not playing with the menu, just sitting there, you're going to get right about five hours. So I would expect that to come down a little bit in the field. Mm -hmm. uh, it also has a USB battery connection, uh, meaning you can, well, that's how you charge the unit. You can plug it into the wall, but you can also run it off of a USB battery pack. So if that's something that concerns you, uh, about the battery, and we may talk about this in a little bit, but you can always plug in any standard, you know, pocket-sized USB battery and continue to run the scope. I have a lot of people ask that about uh, a lot of these newer monoculars, including these AGMs. Uh, and, and for those that don't know, a lot of guys aren't very familiar with those battery packs. This is nothing that's proprietary or special to AGM. You can buy this unit at Walmart, at Best Buy, wherever. Uh, you can get these. There are a lot of different batteries. And, you know, some of these things start at, at $15, $20. And, you know, I think if you pay more than $40, $50 for one, you're probably getting took. So, you know, <laughs> they're they're very cheap, very affordable, very reliable. So that is another, uh, you know, power source for it. And again, as I mentioned, uh, and we will be talking about this again, but 3000 Two hundred and forty-five dollars, and Hans and I were talking about this before the show. As far as we know, uh, this is the least expensive quality, and I'm saying that because there may be something out there there's that a we, caveat. we there, there's a caveat. There may be something out there somewhere that that we don't recommend. But as far as we know, it's the least expensive expensive quality. 640 thermal unit on the market at $3,245. There's not a scope yeah. that we would recommend in that price range. And I don't know of a monocular. That, we were running it through our heads trying to think of all the 640 scopes and monoculars that we know of. And we couldn't think of anything that was in this price range. So I mean, yeah, the, I, I, yeah. yeah, the only, yeah, I, 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 maybe there's another brand we would recommend, but I can't think of anything yeah. in the, in the brands that, that we trust. So anyway, Great price, mm -hmm. nice specs. What do you think, Mr. Han? So I, I've, I've used this unit a lot. I've had it for, goodness, I've had it for quite a while. And I had it, took it out again tonight before the show just to uh, confirm what I thought on this unit. And I'm going to say I, I had it up to a uh, comparable or comparable model from another manufacturer. And I, I thought it... Uh, performs and looks really well. I mean, it looks really good. Um, I would say a, a conservative uh, ID range with this 640 binocular is going to be about 400 yards, uh, maybe a little bit further, um, but I would say conservatively 400 yard ID range. Obviously, you can see much further than that. Uh, you, you can go out to... And I, I want to say something on this real quick. I'm going to interrupt you. Hans is saying 400 yards conservatively, and that's because I hogtied him on this. He 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 I thinks agree. it's longer than that, and I don't disagree, but we're hesitant because we like to be yeah. not only realistic but conservative because we know whatever we say. If we say something is 100 yards and some guy gets it out there and it's 97, he's going to be saying that we're liars and we're exaggerating and what. And so I do believe that there are yeah. conditions where you may not get over 400 yards there's conditions you may not get over 250 yeah. you know there's condition there may be times that may be inexperienced by the the user he may not you know know what he's looking at you may have tall grass you may have certain things yeah. we believe that that 400 plus yards on a deer a hog a coyote is a realistic possibility and it may be a lot further than that yeah. uh in the right conditions to the right user so i just wanted to say we we actually think it's probably further uh, but we get hesitant on saying these very long ranges because, you know, yeah, we want it needs people, to be good conditions and experience and what have you. Yeah, we want people that whenever they order or, or purchase something like this that um, that they're with 
they get what they expect, and that's really what's most or they important. get more even. Yeah, than they even expect. more. But yeah, it's not I, like buying the truck that it says forty two miles to the gallon <sighs> on the the window, and you get it, and it gets eight. You know, that's yeah. not. We don't want to do that. No, well, you, you might be a fool if you think you get forty two miles out of a truck. <laughs> but hey, I mean, there's a little bit of common sense involved in all that kind of stuff, and then even included with some of this, uh, four hundred yards conservatively ID range. Um, you know, it is on the lower scale of magnification when it comes to mm -hmm. these, uh, the thermal monoculars and a lot of the ones that we've tested on previous episodes at 1.4 power. Uh, that can be, uh, there's a lot of positives in that though. I think you and I have never really had a problem with low magnification no. uh, scopes or monoculars. We, we probably actually prefer them on the lower end of the spectrum. But 1.4 base magnification gives you a wide field of view um, but it also, um, you know, being able to ID, uh, you know, it's going to keep you in that 400, 400 yard range. I, I do. I think the picture's, um, very sharp, very clear. Uh, you know, I, it, when you put it up to your eye, you know, you're looking at a 640 thermal monocular or there's no mm -hmm. question. And like, you know, there's sometimes you pick up something and you're like, okay, what is this? Is this a, mm -hmm. a 384? Is this a 640? Right. There's no, you can tell right away when you put it up to your eye that this is a, a, uh, a 640 and is a very good picture image. And like I said, good wide field of view. If you were hunting, uh, close ranges, if you were hunting in the woods, a lot like what we do, um, you know, if you were a coyote hunter, uh, in the Midwest and, you know, you don't need to see or ID out to a thousand yards or, <laughs> or 800 yards, but you want to be able to have that wide field of view because you're covering, you know, uh, 180 yards in front of you and spinning around and trying to cover 100, 180 degrees, not 180 yards, 180 degrees behind you, uh, and making, you know, the least amount of turns as possible when it comes to scanning. You know, I, I, I think, you know, what you just stated, that being that this is what we know of uh, in this in this price and quality range, this is the least expensive 640 monocular. I think by far it is worth $3,300 or almost $3,300 is what the price tag is. I yeah, absolutely think it's definitely worth that. And um, uh, I absolutely yeah. worth it. And yeah. we'll get into the likes and dislikes and, and the people that um, would would benefit from this. And there's a lot of people that benefit from it, but, um, somebody that would tend to buy something like this over anything else. Uh, but like I said, I don't think, you know, I, I think it's worth every bit of the, the money that's being charged yeah, for it. I agree. I, I want to talk real quick about the, the magnification. Um, Hans and I do tend to like the lower magnification, but I think there's a misconception and yes, Hans and I do get in the woods at times. Oh, maybe we're looking for a hog. Maybe we're in some, you know, thicker stuff. Maybe we're, we're taking a bathroom hunting. break. I don't know. Maybe we're taking a bathroom <laughs> break. Maybe we're, that's, that's right. But maybe we're hunting down a log road. Maybe we're in a log set or in, in a confined, a smaller field, whatever. So uh, those things do happen. But generally speaking, um, where Hans and I are both hunting most of the time, is in larger fields, pastures, you know, hay fields, what have you. And so we're not generally hunting in, so some people just imagine us when they say, oh yeah, y'all are in East Texas, y'all don't ever look out over 200 yards. In all the fields that he and I are hunting, most of the time, we're looking 400 plus yards. Okay, so we have that capability in a lot of these fields. And... um so we still like the low magnification. And part of that reasoning is because of the wider field of view. And so if I was thinking about coyote hunters using this, and I know um, a lot of times coyote hunters do like the higher magnification, especially for shooting, which I get. But for scanning, myself personally, and I know Hans is going to agree with this, even if you took me and dropped me off in the Midwest somewhere or the Northwest where you can see a mile, I would still personally rather have a 1.4 power 640 than a four and a half power 320. I like the field of view. Mm -hmm. And agree, granted, I'm comparing two different things. This is a lot more money than that. But I'm making a point that 
the low magnification is not just for tight spots. Yes, right. it's really good there, but I can still get out on a big field and do just fine with a low magnification scope. The other thing that I would mention or, or, or monocular is that when you zoom this thing up one time, so you're going to go up from uh, 1.4 to 2.8 power and your resolution is going to cut in half. So you're going to go from 640 by 512 to 320. I've never done 512 and a half. <laughs> yeah, I, I've, I've never done that. It's going to be like six, I mean, 256. So yeah. 320 by 256. That's where you're going to start on a standard resolution optic, you know, around that 320 or 384. So uh, the I'm making the point, you still have good image quality when you zoom up. So I like yeah. this 1.4. I'm fine with it anywhere between 1.4 and two power. Two and a half is about the most yeah. that I want on a handheld monocular. Uh, so yeah. I, I guess I'm not trying to beat a dead horse. I just want to make the point that I don't view this as too low even if you're hunting big fields. I think you bring up an excellent point. 1.4 low magnification or lower magnification ID range of 400 yards. If you got a coyote running in and they're at 600 yards and you're like, oh, there's something running pretty fast, but I can't tight <laughs> quite till it is. It gets to 400. You're like, yep, that's a coyote. You still have yeah. four, 350 yards to get ready for a shot. So right. I think you're going to be that's okay. Right. Yeah, I think you're going to be okay. It's not going to be a problem. you got plenty of time to set up and continue to scan or look. Heck, you could yeah. you could look away for you know quite a while and turn back, and he'd still be a couple hundred yards away from you. But you know, depending on how fast he's running, if he's charging pretty hard, you still got quite a bit of time. But you're right. The the lower magnification is just fine up in, and we do say that a lot, you know, higher magnification um, to ID out further, which is true. Um, but if you're wanting that, that good 640 image uh, and a wide field of view, I think you're absolutely right. That's, that's a very good point. But, um, you know, we'll, we're going to talk about, let's get into the you know, let's talk about our dislikes first. Let's get yeah. the let's so, get the yeah, ugly stuff out of the way. I always want to get the bad news <laughs> out of the way first. I don't like to end. It. So tell yeah. me, what do you not like? If you could change yeah. anything about this unit, what would it be? You can't change the price because that's that's dirt cheap for yeah. six forty. We're at a great price. So what what would yeah. you change here? Well, I think the good thing is um, part of that discussion. I'm not going to say anything about the picture quality or image. So that's a good thing. Yeah, <laughs> so, that is. That's uh, right. That, if you're You've already won half the battle if your optic has a, a mm -hmm. good image, and we're not mentioning it in the dislikes. Really, I only think the the dislikes that I have with this, um, it's a very once you turn it on, it's a a slow startup, meaning mm -hmm. uh, you know I think it takes, uh, gosh, between five and ten seconds before you see the image on the screen, and then maybe another thirty seconds before uh, the it gives you the option for the menu to come up. So it, it's a it's a pretty slow startup um, mm -hmm. comparative to some of the other optics that we've tested. So slow startup, um, you, you know, you and I, and I may be still on your thunder, internal uh, rechargeable batteries we're yeah. not a fan of. Doesn't matter what brand it is. We're not picking on any particular ones because it seems like all or most of the brands now are going to the non-removable rechargeable batteries. So, um, you know, that's, that's a dislike, but not a huge thing. Uh, other than that, it's a little bulky. I mean, it's not too bulky. I, maybe I'm nitpicking, but it's you know bigger than it, palm, it's, longer it's than a palm cone, It's a yeah, it's a cone shape. Yeah, uh, so it feels like it it gets it larger towards bulky. the lens. Yeah, and it yeah, it kind of it, if it was the same diameter at the lens that it is. At the eyepiece, well, then it'd be I'd like, like it a brick. <laughs> then it'd be like <laughs> a brick. Okay. So I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. It, I mean, we're we're nitpicking, but yeah, we are nitpicking yeah, I, because it, I would this say is, fits in my pocket. Yeah, so yeah, I, I agree with all that. I mean, I think my biggest complaint uh, about the unit is going to be internal battery. You know, it's not my favorite. It is what it is. Uh, I do think that um, you know, if you're up north and you're in very cold conditions you're going to end up with that USB battery pack on there. You're going to end up doing that. Uh, one of the things I know that a lot of guys tell me with the other optics with internal batteries that they'll do is that the cold, you know, obviously really zaps that battery life. They'll put hand warmers in their pockets uh, and shove that thing in there. 
Uh, I've seen guys uh, with with uh, thermal optics with internal batteries, and they've they have taped hand warmers to the outside <laughs> trying to keep that thing warm. So uh, that's something we don't have to worry about down here in Texas too Man. much. But uh, yeah, exactly. If it's if it's that cold, I'm going to the house. Yeah. But uh, I think that's a kind of a hang up of mine if there is anything. Uh, but again, USB battery pack, you've solved that problem. I think the menu system is not as polished as it could be. Um, I think that it's, uh, sometimes, you know, I don't really know exactly. I'm looking at the symbols trying to figure out, but to be honest, I mean, again, we're, we're trying to find things, uh, that if we could just perfect world change, we would, um, I tell everybody, once you get a thermal optic set up and you've kind of got it in the mode you like, mm -hmm. you've got the brightness and the contrast the way you want, you're not going to be doing all that. You're going to, you're going to zoom, you're going to record and you're going to turn it off and on. Right. And all those things are easy to do. Oh, yeah. uh, simple one button push. So that's, that's all that matters on the unit. Cause that's all you're really going to do. So uh, dislikes I think is, is basically that. And that's, that's really, you know, fairly minor. Yeah. So let me, I'll let you, since I stole a lot of your thunder, why don't you start out with the likes? That way I won't steal everything. Uh, likes. I think there's a lot here. I would say, again, we, we have to base this on, on this, this price. I mean, it, it's a great price for a 640. So I'd say image quality, um, overall ease of use it's it is i just think there's a lot of value mm -hmm. for the dollar yeah. and i think you're getting all the features you're getting the video recording um you know again hans and i do not use smartphone apps generally so we don't test them we don't really talk about them but if that is something that you're interested in that capability is there it's waterproof. You know, I was just talking about the guys up north, and I'm going to bring this up again because this is something that uh, I get asked a lot is, you know, will XYZ thermal optic work in these extreme cold conditions? Yeah. And there are uh, a decent number of handhelds on the market right now that are, are really rated for down to, say, 15 plus, mm -hmm. you know, so, so 15 degrees, 14 degrees, somewhere in there, some barely down to zero. And again, while we joke about who's going to be out at zero, who's going to mm -hmm. be out at negative 10, I know a lot of you guys up North are y'all are, mm -hmm. y'all are out hunting in those conditions and this thing's rated at negative 22. Mm -hmm. And so that is a, I mean, you talk about cold weather. If, yeah. if, it, if it's below that, you don't need to be out hunting. Okay. Yeah. I don't know what you're going to do. So I think that's a plus too. Uh, I, I really, I really, really do like this unit for what it is. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about the the type of person. Cause you said all the likes that I would say, let's talk about the type of person that would be interested in, in the AGMS TM 35 dash 640, get it all in there. Um, I think this is going to be a person that says, um, I want 640. You know, I, I've, mm -hmm. I've had 320 or 384, whatever you've had, I've, I've had it, I've tried it. Um, everybody talks about 640, you got to be in 640. Uh, and mm -hmm. I want to get up in that, in, in that bracket. And I think that this is the person that, um, wants to get into 640. They've got a certain, you know, they've got a certain amount of money they can spend that they have budgeted for it. And whether, you know, $3,300 and, they want something that they know is quality. They understand that they pr may not be buying the best thing in the market and they're okay with that, but they do want something that's uh, a very good quality monocular at 640. It's going to last for a long time, hold up well, and then do a good job for them. Uh, you know, and when you're looking and buying, it's hard to ask for anything more than that, you know? Uh, so I, I really think yeah. it's somebody that's in that $3,300, you know, low $3,000 price range and they wanted to get, get into 640 for the, either for the first time or, or for yeah. multiple times, whatever it may be, I, but, you know, trying to hit that price. I agree with that because, you know, and, and you said something there, and I don't want this to, you know, people to take this wrong when he said maybe not the very best in the market. Well, it's true. This isn't a $7,000 thermal, okay? It's, it's you know, less than half that price. But I think it it absolutely holds its own against the competitors that 
are all more expensive than it. And I think you got to look at it as you're basically play, paying uh, for 384, 320. You're paying for a standard thermal resolution and you're getting 640. And you're not just getting 640 that somebody slapped together with a, a crappy core yeah. that looks bad, but you can say it's 640. I mean, it looks good. Mm -hmm. And now, uh, and I'm going to say this, then I'll go back to, you know, who it's for. Do I think that this is the, the best 640 high resolution thermal monocular on the market for under $4,500? No, I think it is, I think it holds its own against those. And I think if you've got a, a, a big budget and you're looking for, you know, a few other features and, and things that those units have, maybe those are a better choice. But I think for the guy who either says, maybe you have the money, you know, maybe you've, maybe you got unlimited money, but you want to make a good value mm -hmm. conscious choice. I think this is it. I think it, it makes a lot of sense uh, for this unit. So who buys it? I think you said it. It's the guy who uh, wants 640 and for whatever reason, whether it's budget or just being, you know, price conscience uh, doesn't want to spend for 42, mm -hmm. 45, whatever, $100. Uh, I think it's a logical choice for any hog hunter mm -hmm. because we do have the low magnification, which most of us as hog hunters like. Uh, I still think that it's fine for the northern guy. Now, I understand that some coyote hunters, even in their handheld, want higher magnification. They're used to it. They're used to it in the daylight. They want it at night and they're willing to put up with a lower or narrower field of view. And so I get that. And if that's, if you're that guy that you are a magnification snob, then this unit's not for you. And I say snob, y'all know what I mean. It's not for you. Uh, but I talk to more and more guys that are coyote hunters that have high magnification scopes mm -hmm. and they like them, yeah. but they realize when it comes time for a handheld, these guys are calling me saying, Hey, I love my scope. I would not change it. I want that three and a half, four and a half, maybe even five and a half power. I, I want that. But for my scanning, mm -hmm. I want to be able to quickly scan 180 degrees not miss anything oh, yeah. and, you know, get on my scope when I see him. So, yeah, it makes, it makes perfect sense. You can cover more ground with this monocular lower uh, magnification. So, I mean, you can, you know, definitely be able to see more uh, and, and not miss that coyote running in. So, yep. I, you know, I, I think it, it's, uh, we're not trying to hold our excitement because, <laughs> because this yeah. is something that's uh, uh, a really good deal. Um, we want to make sure that everybody understands when they call in and ask questions. And, and let me uh, go ahead and throw this in there. If you are interested uh, in this unit, please contact Jason at 877-350-1818. Uh, you can get on the website, OutdoorLegacyGear.com. Check it out. Order it. Um, but if it, if it shows it's out of stock at any time, yeah. uh, just send us an email or give us a call. Uh, th these, these units are moving in and out all the time and normally getting them, uh, from AGM is normally pretty quick. So if you see it and we don't have it, like I said, call or email, we may have it within, yep. you know, a day or so. Never know. I, I remember getting this unit for the first time and taking it out and looking at it and calling you Jason and being like, how much is the price on this thing again? <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly. It, it, I, I said, what do you think about it? And he goes, well, how much is it? And, uh, I told him and he was like, I, how much again? I know, <laughs> Are you I mean, sure? I remember the conversation like it was yesterday and it was several weeks ago. It, it, this is a great price binocular and a very good binocular for the money. It, like I said, it's worth every bit of $3,300. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, if you're looking for a monocular and you want all the choices, I mean, that's one of the things that you and I do are very thorough when it comes into the conversations. Cause we talk about if, if somebody has a price range, we give them options of, okay, this is, well under your price range. This is right at your price range. And this is outside your price range and di the different qualities and specifications of each model. Um, 
but one last thing I was saying, I'm going to wrap this up for me and I'll let you finish and you can put your bow on it. But what I would say is I don't know that it's, and this is going to maybe sound weird, but I don't know that this unit is going to steal a lot of the buyers of 640 thermal handhelds. It might some because of the price, but I think it's going to steal a lot of the 320, 384 standard resolution buyers. Mm -hmm. The guy who was fixing to spend darn near this much money on the standard resolution. Mm -hmm. I think it steals that buyer into this price range, uh, or I'm sorry, into this resolution because of the price. I think he's got to look long and hard at spending the same money yeah. or m maybe a couple hundred dollars more to get a, a 640. So that's, yeah. uh, again, not, not saying that it doesn't hold its own against those those other units, but I think it's really going to steal from the, the guys that are looking to spend the same exact money uh, to buy a 384 well, unit. Well, and you hit the nail on the head, and that's why I believe AGM did what they did in the pricing of this unit because it, it does make you take a long, hard look and, and consider this over – uh, anything else. So, um, like I said, check it out. If you want to purchase this unit, give us a call, uh, and, or check out, <laughs> check out a review video that I will be doing on it very soon on the Hansi's Texas YouTube channel. I need to get some more videos of this thing and, and load it up, but I will be doing the official review over there. Uh, if you have any questions again, please contact Jason at outdoor legacy gear, 877-350-1818. Uh, the website, OutdoorLegacyGear.com. You can find Jason on YouTube, Outdoor Legacy Gear, and Facebook and Instagram. You can find all of our past episodes on the TheLateNightVisionShow.com. Uh, I, I think we should. it's worth mentioning because we kind of discovered something going on weird with iTunes and Google Play. Um, we've noticed that our last episode did not load on those two platforms. So we're... Yeah, episode 117. Yeah which was put out last week, did not load. Now, we're working on getting that resolved right now. We're yeah. doing some tests, and we're in, in contact uh, with the company that does all the hosting for our podcast. But, yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that. It did not load on Thursday, mm -hmm. uh, and as of us recording this, uh, it's, it's still not yeah. there. We're working on to see why. It looks like it's on Spotify. It's on uh, the Anchor yeah, app, yeah. Uh, maybe several others. I mean, YouTube and all that's unaffected, but yeah. it's just the audio version that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. So if for some reason you normally listen on audio uh, and didn't see it, we're working on it. So we're seeing what we can do. Yeah, so we're, we're trying to work out and resolve that issue right now. Um, stay tuned. Check out all the social media on Facebook and Instagram for the Late Night Vision Show. We'll kind of keep you up to date. I'll make a, a post about it. Um, and uh, make sure that we can direct everybody over to a place where they can find it. We don't know what's going on, but we're going to figure it out. We promise. So uh, if right. you want to watch any of my videos, you can go over to Hans East Texas on YouTube. That's H-A-N-S-E-T-X. You can also find me on Instagram. Mr. Yeah. Jason. <laughs> I didn't know, man. It was You were just didn't even take a breath, and like, then he was out. I thought you passed out. I thought you fell asleep no. on your keyboard. <laughs> no, I'm sitting here. You were you're on a roll. I, I didn't think you was going to stop. No, folks, I do. we appreciate you as always coming back. Thanks for the support. Thanks for supporting the Late Night Vision Show, for Hans's channel, uh, for supporting Outdoor Legacy, and choosing us for your night vision and thermal optic needs. We uh, honestly, graciously appreciate it. And uh, we've got some more exciting shows coming up here uh, the rest of this month. And we've got some new optics and things we've been waiting on uh, since SHOT Show. It'll be coming soon. So we'll be uh, talking about those hopefully within the next several weeks. And so y'all stay tuned for all the latest news in night vision and thermal imaging about hog hunting and coyote hunting. We look forward to seeing y'all again. So as always, stay safe in the fields and keep making those bacon pancakes.